Yeah, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Trump Week, one of our most important shows in these times. And uh, today we have a full house. Uh, we have Tim Apicella, we have Winston Welsh, uh, and we have Stephanie, uh, Stephanie, 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 uh, <laughs> Stephanie Dalton. And, and uh, they're all hosts in Think Tech, and we're all going to collaborate and cooperate on trying to figure out what Trump did this week. And it wasn't easy, but it was all around cor coronavirus. Uh, Tim, let's start with you. Um, what, what are your thoughts about his uh, performance this week? Well, Donald Trump has finally made the transformation from Nair of the CV-19 virus to a believer. And unfortunately, it took way too long for him to get to that position. And I don't think he really got to that position on his own. I think he was prompted and prodded by um, Fox, Fox TV station, uh, specifically Tucker Carlson. Uh, Tucker Carlson made a very, very um, definitive proclamation about the seriousness of CV-19 virus. And I think uh, other people have been working on him, specifically uh, Dr. F uh, Fucci. And uh, the bottom line is, he's, he's here now. I mean, he's serious. And I think that's good for, for our nation. Yeah, Stephanie, do you agree? Do you think, you think Trump has behaved himself properly? Is it good for the country, what he's been doing lately? I think that he, I certainly agree with Tim's point. I, I think that uh, he is coming around um, way too slowly, but he's um, being, I think, coached to, to address this in a, in a presidential manner. I think he's doing a lot better with, his, with reading off of his prompter and in the kinds of statements that he's making. However, I did hear that uh, people are wishing that he would be okay to step back and let the experts and the scientists and the researchers and the doctors take on the major responsibility of communicating to the public. So hopefully um, he'll feel he can do that and, and let Vice President Pence step up there and, and be the MC kind of person. So we'll see if any of that uh, statement from the, from I think it was on NPR or the radio someplace, maybe he'll hear that, maybe he'll do it, maybe not. It would be better if he did. Yeah, Winston, you know, I think these guys are being soft on him. Um, as a lot of newscasters and uh, opinion people are saying that he's, he's wrecked his own possibilities at winning uh, in the election in November, um, that he is the worst possible person to handle a crisis like this, and that he's done a bloody terrible job and exposed millions of people uh, to horrendous, if not lethal disease. How do you feel about it? Well, I think all of those are true. Um, he has been very late to uh, just recognizing this as uh, something where, you know, even on the, I think it was the 6th, he says he's not concerned at all um, about the virus. On the 7th, I'm sorry, down in Mar-a-Lago, and um, it, that it's going, it could be maybe just washed right through. I think since our last meeting uh, a week ago, you know, there was uh, the news conference on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the markets continue to tank because they realized that the response from the federal government has been a day late and a dollar short. But of course, nobody wants, um, uh, you know, to have any schadenfreude here. People do want to rally around a leader. They want to see him or her perform to the best of his or her ability. And, and sometimes that may be stepping aside, realizing you're out of your depth here or breadth, and there are people that can step up. But with our um, you know, the government being eviscerated at this level, they're really having to put things together. Fortunately, we're seeing uh, that he does seem to recognize the seriousness of that. I think, a, a as Tim said, uh, uh, that Tucker Carlson got his ear, as well as a report from England showing the uh, what's going to happen if nothing is done. So all of this together, I think he just realized, wow. But that said, his <laughs> approval ratings are up just from Newsweek, which I was reading this morning. So the masses are saying, hey, you're doing a great job. And, you know, we want success out of this. There is zero question about that. So how we best support this man who's in office is uh, some of the moment, I guess. Yeah. Well, I still think your guys are being too soft on him. Uh, what, you know, what happened? What happened to the uh, testing? Seeing a lot of testing around the country. I don't see a lot of testing around the country. It's, it's peanuts. We're way behind, uh, you know, Korea, for example. 
Uh, if we have drive, drive, drive-in testing, it's only in one or two places in the country. The test kits are not here yet. Um, of course, the respirators are critical for people who are dying, and uh, he's not providing respirators. He's telling the states they have to, you know, somehow find them and pay for them themselves. Um, you know, he's 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 hoaxing us. If you want to looking for a hoax here, it's him. Uh, that's my opinion. But Tim, what do you think about his, the specific programs that he's talking about? And uh, what do you think about the possibility, the fact, and the possibility that he will achieve those programs? Well, in programs, let's talk about the packages in Congress. Um, just to do a little history, Donald Trump suggested that $2.5 billion would be enough money to care, take care of the problems. Immediately, Chuck Schumer said, I don't think so. It's going to be much, much more than that. So fortunately, Chuck Schumer worked with the Republicans, and they passed the $8.3 billion package, which now I believe the Senate, as of this morning or this this afternoon, has approved that package. It now goes to Donald Trump for signature. That package is a, a drop in the bucket, which is going to be required to combat this virus. Uh, it does have some provisions for... Um, relief for the airlines. It does have some provisions for relief to the those who have paid. I'm not clear whether or not it has provisions for sick leave. That was a hotly contested provision of that bill. Um, I think if it's not in the, the House bill, the Senate bill, but I'll tell you one thing that was a complete waste of time, and that's why the market sunk, is the concept of having uh, payroll tax um, cuts and help anyone who's been laid off. It doesn't help anyone that hasn't paid their mortgage or has to pay their landlord. This is completely useless, and it certainly has nothing to do to help those who are on uh, earn their wages by tips and uh, commissions. So let's work on programs that are going to aid the package for Americans, and I guarantee you the stock market will stop bleeding. But if all the package elements are designed to help businesses and ignore the bottom line of what's causing this virus, and those measures to stop it, then, you know, we'll continue to see the Dow fall. We, you know, the Dow is at 19.8 right now. Um, it's going to go lower. Oh, bad news. Yeah, I mean, it's, sometimes he says something and the Dow goes up, but mostly it goes down dramatically. So, uh, Stephanie, is he putting too much, too much emphasis on, uh, on raising the stock market or preserving the stock market and helping big business as opposed to helping save lives? I mean, where do you, is the emphasis in the right place with these programs? Well, I, I just don't hear anything about that from him, nor does he have the expertise for the stock market or any of those financial issues. Um, but I do agree that um, he's listening he is listening to other people, and that's why we're getting some really good news here. I think the Mercy and the um, and the other ship, the um, Comfort, getting those out to solve a little bit of our, our hospital shortage of beds is encouraging that he is doing that, So, which is evidence that he's listening, because mostly he doesn't really have that depth of knowledge about the government and what are all of these fabulous resources that we have to bring to this crisis and which he didn't bring or even know about to begin with. Now he's learning. However, I agree with, with Jay very much that this is a hoax again, that there's this hoaxness to it, if that's a word, because even with regard to the payroll tax, I'm, I'm just so uh, sensitive to his predationary, his, his predator instincts, because that is the, another first step. It could be a first step. And the, the disaster fantasy is, of course, the, to take the payroll tax out is to have people stop paying their social security contribution. And what is the point of that? And also it may be a lever for or set, set up a track here of experience with relieving people of that to getting at reductions in the social security um, uh, benefit. So, I mean, that is just a hugely uh, um, threatening move is to, to fiddle with that money. And I certainly agree with yeah. Tim that it, exactly all of those things he said about what it can and cannot do are absolutely correct. Winston, Winston, although they're late, you know, it's taken a long time for Congress to get its act together, uh, even after it was clear that Trump was... Uh, taking Mnuchin's advice and all that. We won't see any money on this for at least a couple of weeks. Uh, so far, it's really all talk. But 
Let me ask you, um, you know, uh, is, is this, has this been um, fast enough? Uh, have we seen political will here? Uh, have we seen the government getting together? Uh, have we seen Trump actually leading Congress? Um, and, and I suppose uh, I, like, I like your thoughts on, on how, how it would work because they're bandying about trillions of dollars. Do we have that kind of money? We already ran into a big deficit. Uh, the Republicans have been spending, you know, gazoos of money. Um, now more, another trillion here and there. You know what Everett, Dir Everett, Everett Dirksen said, you know, a, a trillion here and a trillion there. After a while, it, 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 it makes for real money. Didn't he say that? Well, you know, this presidency has been an unmitigated disaster for our nation, all of it. Right. But what I'm seeing signs and hope right now is that uh, there are some experts stepping up, that there's governors, that there's school boards, that there's companies. Everybody else is saying, we're not seeing the leadership, so we're going to take it ourselves. We're going to do what we need to do to protect our, our family, our workers, our, um, our states. And then at the at the federal level, I think we are seeing um, a concerted effort. I think he's not leading Congress so much as, as uh, Nancy Pelosi said, this is what we need to be said, told the Republicans, from what I understand, you guys need to get behind this uh, stock market tanking. Now it's lost all of the gains uh, since he became president. Uh, he's really looking at legacy issues. I don't even know if the idea of uh, re-election is uh, sparked in his brain, but it does feel to me really for the first time that he is talking about all Americans uh, in this. I, I don't feel like it's just the people that voted for him or his fans. I feel like there is an all Americans thing. And maybe it's just that he doesn't want literally millions of people to die on his watch in a catastrophe that may have been much more avoidable, but uh, that seems to be my perception of it. Um, you know, again, we all hope for uh, that he has the wisdom to uh, put the right people in place to make those decisions and that he can step up to the moment. He has not shown this for his whole presidency, but now may be his time that he can say, look, maybe I haven't been hitting it right with the whole country, but now is now's that opportunity. And I do. Yeah, well, that. the most. Uh... You know, the most uh, rational, cool voice has been Mnuchin, not him. Uh, he can't even read a teleprompter script. But but let me go. Let me go to that. It's, it's a good segue because I always feel that what Trump says and what Trump does may not be the same thing. And uh, you, you know, your view that maybe uh, he's stepping up. Uh, you really wonder. I mean, this is the week, if you will recall, that he's been leaking the notion that he's going to pardon Michael Flynn, uh, which is something. You know, really awful, awful. Flynn pleaded guilty. He's going to pardon him. So um, doesn't doesn't that suggest that it's business as usual for Trump? Well, Jay, I'd like to take that on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, remember, there's things that are seen and unseen. And for the last three years of his presidency, we've always been talking about the shiny object. Well, we don't need a shiny object any longer. It's called coronavirus 19. But he's still doing things under, you know, out of sight that we don't even have time or, or want to pay attention to. We've got a national crisis. We have a worldwide pandemic, a worldwide crisis. So it, it's amazing to me that these these headlines are even making its way to the papers. He should not even be involved in such discussions. But um, getting back to Winston's comment about legacy, um, just yesterday he's going, uh, he's trying to preserve his reputation and, and he's deflect responsibility. Now, remember, he said he's going to give himself a perfect 10 on the way this is being handled. Well, we all think that's not the case. I'm sure of it. But uh, he recently just said no one could see this coming. Well, I just heard an interview from Chris Liu, who is the Obama cabinet secretary. And he said specifically he was in a meeting with Trump, um, Trump administration folks. And they did what is called a tabletop exercise for disaster preparedness. And in that exercise, they covered at least two things. One is there's a massive hurricane that hit the United States, and two is a massive pandemic virus. So they, they trained, they talked about it, they planned for it. That's before he really even stepped into the office. They were, they were planning for these things. So for Donald Trump to say, no one saw this coming, that is patently false statement. 
Well, while, while I have you, I mean, what about that extraordinary uh, statement he made that he didn't know uh, that, that the, um, you know, the, the, the epidemic uh, team had been disbanded? He didn't know that CDC had, uh, the budget of CDC had been seriously cut um, I, I find that extraordinary. And he, he turned to somebody else. That really happened? Was that you? It wasn't me. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is that? Day, mean? Is that like Trump as usual? Fe February 26th, he was quoted to say, yeah, we laid off those people because I'd like to save money and we can get the, we can get them back together. It's almost like, you know, Animal House. We can get the band back together again. And the bottom line is he fired him. He wanted to save budget. Okay, I get it. But does he not realize that, you know, these tabletop exercises were performed and a coronavirus or something like it was a very real uh, possibility. So he laid off the team. Yeah, and, he, and, and he, he gave us a whole song and dance about it. It wasn't him. Uh, Stephanie, you're talking about the Defense Reduction Act, and I think that's another one of those things uh, that he's doing behind his back. Uh, can you talk about that for a minute? Yes, I think that um, th these points about his repertoire are really important. I mean, and these things that we're citing that he's saying um, are that are self-serving. This this is just thematic throughout all of his statements. And uh, another thing that is uh, thematic or important to watch are some hints that he gives about what's going on in the backdrop. And so uh, one one of those that may be in in play right now has to do with. Um, not only did he, as you know, invoke the uh, Stafford Act, which brought the FEMA uh, operations um, and activation to the highest level, level one, and this is good. Um, and uh, he also invoked what is uh, called the Defense Reduction Act. And this is a 50s law that came out of the Korea War experience, and it, it has been invoked numerous times. But one of the concerns about him mentioning that, and he just mentioned it in passing, that he was invoking that, and there was no explanation or no description or no uh, sign of any of his intentions uh, for what to do with those additional powers or enhanced expanded powers that are allotted to the executive through that power, through that act. So um, that is worrisome because he has this crisis situation and he's not thinking, as you all pointed out, that, it, that we're not about unity and coming together and ser serving the people and saving the people's lives, which are going to redound on him if they're not saved, presumably, um, even though he's very Teflon. I don't know how you're going to get out from under that. We've already got 106 deaths in the U.S. from this, this uh, virus. But what is he going to do with the defense re Reduction Act powers that he he now has invoked, and my my concern, my disaster fantasy, is that we're going to move towards a situation of hopefully not um, drastic um, laws that are going to keep us sequestered or are in place, protecting in place, but maybe reconsidering the 2020 presidential election. And I just think that this is an important warning that we need to listen and we need to think about what are these keynotes that are popping up when he speaks off script yeah. and what is the background on that? What is going on? Where are the questions from the press about that? What is it and what are you going to do with the Nation, the Defense Reduction Act, please? Yeah, uh, and I remember uh, a, a situation where the, uh, what was it, the PBS reporter Asked him uh, why why he terminated the uh, you know the the uh, in infection team, and he mm -hmm. said that's a nasty question. I love that. I saw that. He, this is, <laughs> Tim and I predicted this months ago that that in the period between the his uh, exoneration quotes uh, and the election um, that he was going to attack the press. We're going to see more and more of that. But you know, actually, I've saved my favorite question for you, Winston. My favorite question of the week is what <clears throat> is going on with China? So, you know, he dumps on them. Uh, he says it's all their fault. He locks them out of the United States. He makes statements to evoke all kinds of racist reaction around the country. Okay. And then they, in return, blame the United States. 
But now uh, he is trying to defend against that that claim, uh, and it's 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 sort of the perfect storm. Uh, what do you make of that? Uh, how and I guess the most important thing is all of this considered. How are his diplomatic relations doing with China and with Europe? It seems to me that this is a time, as Stephanie says, to come together. In fact, our diplomat diplomatic relations are are not coming together at all. Well, it, it's not helpful. It's not helpful from uh, Donald Trump or from the Chinese to take the bait. Uh, I think all nations around the world realize this is an aberration in in American history and American policy, and they've just been waiting it out until we get someone who's responsible and and doesn't say just inflammatory things like that. We need international cooperation now. We don't need the Chinese kicking out um, our reporters or them kicking out ours. People can, well, I want to say people can see fake news when they see it, but maybe they can't. However, uh, when you have, I don't know if the report was true about trying to buy this uh, vaccine uh, from Germany and that oh, sort yeah. of just, but this is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Right. This is vaccine is for people. And when you, I, I think the more important thing is that when you have a president with over 16,000 documented unlies, uh, lies or untruths or deceptions, and then many of them um, uh, about even this virus, if you just go back a, a couple of months, there's a credibility thing here so that when something is said, we have to second guess and his own administration have to come on and, and do just major cleanup work and say, actually, maybe the entire uh, opposite is true. So whether it's with China or Europe or the American public, he needs to stand aside and just introduce the people and say, this is the expert on the topic. She is going to tell you what to do. He's going to uh, tell you what uh, steps you might take and that sort of thing. And let other people take over. And that's probably the most presidential thing that he can do right now is realize he doesn't have the answers and he just needs to be a reassuring figure at this point, as much as he possibly can be when the, with the nation so divided. But, um, you know, if he gets up there and says, folks, I'm out of my, he's not going to say he's out of his depth, but uh, here is Dr. So-and-so, here's Director So-and-so, and they are looking out for all of our best interests. That would do a lot to kind of calmer parasympathetic nervous systems while the stock market continues to drop. I hope so. I, you know, I think the stakes are so high in terms of lives. You know, the statisticians, the mathematicians are projecting huge numbers of American deaths. Like a million people are at risk of losing their life in this thing. Um, I don't know if he takes that seriously. I don't know if he's capable of doing, you know, what we hope. So, Tim, um, we have enough time to go round robin and give uh, final thoughts and projections, if you will, expectations for the next week uh, here on Trump Week. Uh, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are I want to agree wholeheartedly with what Winston said. If we can get him out of the picture and let the experts take over, I guarantee you that will calm at least the financial what. But when he says one thing and he means another and he uh, miscategorizes the truth, um, that is not helpful for the American public to hear, nor the financial markets. So if they could just get him to be mum, just for once in his three years of presidency, um, things and the way we proceed on this coronavirus is going to go a whole lot better. All right, Tim Apicella. Stephanie, Stephanie Dalton, what have you got for us as a, a sort of closing thought and a projection for next week? Well, I, I have a rather dismal thought uh, based on news I've heard lately coming in from international sources, and that is the special protection that we thought had been given by the virus to the children is not actually playing out that way. And that now that there's more data that they're able to see that that's not the case and there may be a vulnerability and jeopardy for youngsters uh, to be um, given the virus as much as uh, our, our uh, Kapuna and our elderly folk are eligible for. So I'm, I'm very concerned about that. We do have the 109 deaths right now, but they're not, they don't include any children. So I think that if we go forward and this, this news starts to come in and actually affects our population, we, we are really going to have some dreadful work to do. It's going to be tough. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Winston about the the deal that Trump uh, allegedly tried to uh, cut with the German company called uh, CureVac, where um, the word is that he tried here his administration tried to buy exclusive rights to the vaccine that they, that was promising. They have two vaccine candidates that they're ready to do trials on. And um, <clears throat> what's interesting about that is uh, two two things. He was going to pay a billion dollars to them. Um, uh, and, uh, of course, the second thing is he wanted exclusive to the United States. That is no other country. And possibly he saw it as a profit center, which is a pretty ugly concept in these times. Uh, and that the Germans, you know, uh, uh, you know, said no, uh, rejected that entirely and made it public. Um, but my question to you is, what, what, are, what are your thoughts about um, these other strange things that are happening? Will they continue to happen? I mean, if Trump took Tim's advice uh, and just shut his mouth and stopped with the tweeting, uh, would that solve the problem? Or there's so many other problems, threads, if you will, that are going on with this administration that it could never be clear and clean or as we hope. Well, you know, uh, there was a great article in Salon uh, by historian David Perry, and he says, after Trump, we'll need a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to begin healing from the harm done to the country by the Trump administration's lies and system abuses of rule of law, not to mention its criminality, corruption, and other assaults values. Such a uh, commission would also be a necessary first step documenting the Trump regime's crimes on assault on truth, reality, and America's collective memory, including uh, corruption, manipulation of the judicial system, his media messaging, and psychological effects that Trump and his authoritarian regime have on the American people. That is not to say that uh, uh, Trump is not, uh, uh, well, any, in any event, I read the article at, at Salon. I think it hits to the core that this is even before this whole coronavirus has, has hit. I'm really concerned about, uh, as we go forward, as Stephanie said, what are we looking at with these laws? Are we going to have some emergency powers act that's uh, invoked that says we can't have an election this year? It's not going to be free and fair because not enough of you have come to the polls or we don't have uh, mail by voting or whatever it will be. And therefore, I'm suspending elections. It could very easily happen or Congress could. Uh, I don't know what could happen in that, but or he could just tell his folks, you know, it's not going to be fair. I'm not recognizing the results of it. There's a lot of things that could happen. Hopefully none of that will happen. He will realize this was, uh, this was a fun four years and I'm done and let someone else take over. I don't think that's his instinct. So I do have a lot of concerns, but uh, echoing what Tim said, if he can just step aside right now, that would be the best for the nation. Just stepping to the side and introducing people. He's not going to give up. He's a fighter. Um, but hopefully his uh, best self-preservation instincts will take over, which would include taking care of the nation as best as possible right now. And uh, at this point, we just have to, this is what we got. So we have to um, step up in our every way that we can, in city, states, organizationally um, and personally, and, uh, and look out for each other. Yeah, amen to that. I only want to add that uh, after some of our other shows where we titled it something about, is this, is this a hoax um, on YouTube? We had an inordinate number of comments from people saying, uh, yes, the coronavirus is a hoax. Uh, and that leads to uh, an article that I saw recently how a lot of Trump supporters, a lot of Republicans uh, still feel that uh, there's nothing to worry about. And they, they remember Trump's earlier remarks, but not his current position. On, on the seriousness of the uh, trend, uh, the pandemic. So that has to change uh, for us to go forward in any um, you know robust way, I think. And hopefully we'll see it change. All right, you guys, look forward to uh, next week. Next week on Trump Week, thank you all. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Winston. Thank you, Stephanie. Great show. Aloha and wash your hands. <laughs>